Um, we have a lot of topics. Welcome. Uh, we don't mute anybody because it's your class. If you have something brilliant, let's get it out. And if it's urgent, say it. Um, if not, we'll get to questions and answers. And you can always put things in the chat or raise your hand if you know how to do that next to your name. So first, if you're new, um, and hopefully it'll remind you if you're, you're a veteran of class, uh, you can call this shop, Mom's Computer, in between classes. We'll put our email address, we'll put our 800 number in there, you can put our cell phone. So as part of your wonderful retirement, which you so earned, uh, you can just give us a call if there's any problems, if there's any weird pop-ups that look like scams or anything you want to learn. You, uh, we have an arrangement with Lasers, and so there's no charge for that, and we welcome your questions in between. Because during class, you shouldn't feel rushed to maybe to do some of the things we're going to do. You can review it. Uh, you don't have to be holding the phone in one hand and watching live in the other hand as we click through things. Uh, so we'll get started. So you're not alone. You don't have to go fishing on Google at 2 in the morning. Where does this crazy pop-up mean? Just send us an email. And we'll get back to you. And the benefit for us, besides helping out, is we get to learn all the latest scams. You know, you're the people that get them the most. Uh, seniors, retirees, and the ones that are targeted the most. So um, one thing that separates us as a nation is not so much politics, but who uses an Android and an Apple phone? It's important to know that's the biggest computer that you have. So everybody that uses an iPhone, raise your hand. Let's see that go up. Oh, they're a very proud group. And who uses an Android phone? I use an Android phone and I use an Apple computer, sort of a mixed marriage. Um, so two different devices, mostly they work the same, but as you can see, there are, uh, there are choices out there. Uh, we have been doing something every month that we'll talk about. We've been building a group website and it's a password saver, a nice password saver that contains you know, all the information that this group put together in one place. You're going to get to the end of the year, and then that'll be posted for anybody that wants to download that and use that live. So we'll do a little review there. Who's maybe heard of Threads? It's a new social media app, sort of like Twitter. It's made by Meta, which is Facebook. And it's something like 100 million users in you know, 47 hours or something. So we'll give a little view of that. Another one, this came in um, from Lynn Flygar. Um, you're out there and you're connecting to Wi-Fi. You're using Starbucks or you're at a hotel or you know wherever you are, somebody's house. Um, how safe are you if you connect your phone or your computer to that public Wi-Fi and what you should not have to do? If we get to some time, we'll talk about how to delete and save space on the phone. As you're busy videoing every move the grandkids make, but you inadvertently do three minutes on the floor for the video, let's go find that and delete that from your phone and not carry that around with all the memories. Talk about some hot scams coming around, which is the text ones coming in. Hello, you're late. Um, are you ready for Thursday? Uh, have you spoken to Jeannie? These just I don't know if you've gotten yeah. them, but these random texts come in. We'll set up what they want, how to avoid them. A Google app preview. Google. So I do some traveling, you know, not a lot for work. I do more than pleasure, sadly. But uh, I found a new app in Google, just like all your other Google apps, YouTube or Google Docs or Google Sheets. Turn it up. And it's called Google Travel. And I just got some great flights, just as good as going to any other travel um, aggregate website like Travelocity or Priceline. Uh, I'll show it to you. Let's keep it uh, up. Like hearing devices more clearly, little things you can buy for yourself. And those are headphones, earbuds, wireless connection. One thing is if you're in a meeting right now, you plug those headsets in, they group around you, can't hear it's coming out of your computer. They can hear you, of course. Uh, we'll talk about any telemedicine, and then we have some tough tech Jeopardy questions. Hey, who's uh, heard about this new app called Threads? Is anybody following the social media? I have. I who's do. I have? This is Rhonda. Yeah. My daughter and her husband, they both work there at Meta. There you go. I mean, you couldn't get more so any stock information for us now that you said that. <laughs> I love that, Rhonda. That, Share I, it with the retirees. I have, to find out. I have to find out about that part. <laughs> so I, I heard on CNBC. Hmm? I watched I on a CNBC. It? Anybody get it? Anybody's using it? Not yet. Uh, okay, so, so let me show you what it looks like. So uh, who here has an Instagram account? Who goes on Instagram and looks at pictures or know what that is? Okay. It's, who has a Facebook account? Even if you don't use it. Instagram is part of Facebook. 
you can get an Instagram account. Instagram is like more of a story told in pictures or little videos instead of texts and you know rants and things like that. Um, if you have an Instagram account, it's very easy to get a Threads account. Now, who's familiar with Twitter? The way that looks and the flow of that, that is a stream of information coming from people you follow. It could be, you know, just uh, anybody typing from anywhere at any time. Um, so who's used Twitter or seen what Twitter is? I've seen it, but it's too confusing. Well, it's a little confusing. I, I can understand that. So what Twitter is, and it's popular, what's really popular, it's like it's used if there's an earthquake, you go on two in the morning onto Twitter and you see real time tweets from people that are milliseconds giving you the update where what's the location, so on and so forth. Um, mm -hmm. And of course, it's turned to politics and trying to generate tweets because people just conversing back and forth, which is the mother's milk of social media, which is interaction. Um, but threads is just a new version because there's a big market out there. Uh, and I'm going to go share my screen here. First of all, I put my social media in a little folder that says SM, so I don't see all my stuff splattered around, so you don't see what I'm interested in. There's my social media. I'm open right now. Now, first, let's look at the original. I think it is for this. It was original. It's called Twitter. And on my, on, on my feed, uh, let's see what I'm looking at. I get Elon Musk all the time. I get some politics, local politics. Should be some finance and tech. And it looks like that. And it happens in real time. If somebody tweets something, you can get it in a second. But it's very controversial. Um, there's you know, a lot of things on there. The other one you could use is, this is the new one where it says threads. And it's sort of just the copycat. It sort of does the same thing. And where you see the New York Times on there, they weren't on there a week ago because it was new. But now, if there was, I imagine, an emergency, they would post on there and you'd be able to follow the New York Times or whoever is on there officially. You could have just your local volunteer fire department on there. Um, and this is the, really the difference. It's smaller. Um, it's a little more friendly, I think. I mean, it just doesn't seem to be on my feed anyway, like rant as much. Uh, and those are and those are threads now. The one that instigates all that, since we're going through these, is Instagram. So let me go to my Instagram. That's my Instagram page. I don't have a lot on there. You can see Israel's on there. Um, and if I want to see other people's pictures, these are just things that are happening around me, but in pictures. These are people oh. I follow. Some could be my friends, some could not. So that's the essence of, of threads. It's just a different market. It's just a new thing. And I think it's something to be thought about. I mean, it's uh, it's out there. Uh, I guess if you're well, on I Facebook, just, stock, you'd be happy. Yes, please go ahead. It's Sally. Uh, Sally. Yes. Uh, do you? How much time do you spend using those sites? Only about twenty-two hours a day. I don't really leave here much. <laughs> um, no. So it's a good question. So personally, I got, for work, I'm always posting because you want to protect my little company's name and you do get business. That's the crazy thing. So I'd say about an hour and a half a day. I get up in, in the morning a couple of times and I, I'll put something, you know, maybe about five hours per week. And I'm not as much looking at other people's things. I also manage some other people's pages. Personally, I'm good after about 10 minutes, you know, and I'm still older guy. So I like Facebook. Everybody's on Facebook. I get to see what people are doing and it satisfies that bug, you know, to be a voyeur. Um, um, social media, and also helps me communicate. There are some seniors in my life that they're very comfortable on Facebook and they do post there. And that's an easy way to communicate with that group as opposed to trying to change it at that point. So personally, 10 minutes a day max. Um, sometimes I forget it. And then uh, for business, I'd say about five hours a week. What about you? I don't use it. Mm -hmm. I was... When I first started with you, I was hacked on my Amazon account yeah. to the tune of about $4,500, and it took them a long time to uh, refund the money and to deal with it. And 
that scared me so much that I'm hesitant to get on any more sites other than just my email and texting. Sure. Well, you know, it's it's definitely out there. Those scams can be clicked. We all know that. We'll discuss that more. But if it's done right, you have a two-factor authentication, which means you sign in two times and you're diligent. The good side of it is the connectivity. Just like on a Lacers well page alone, you could see, go to their Facebook page and see what the events are or post something like, oh, look, the tech event was amazing. Elijah's the best. You know, he just keeps getting younger. And uh and you can share that in the group. Like that, so there are, those are the benefits, um, if done correctly. And scams can happen under any environment. Um, I know that. So maybe, maybe not. But if you're free, like if you're better working in the garden, I think that's where we all want to be at some point. Um, I do connect on it. Um, and when I do it personally, you know, sometimes it is fun to see things. Any other questions for your social media? Royce's hand is raised. Royce? Royce? <laughs> Hi there. Um, this is sort of related. A couple of months ago, you suggested we experiment with chat GPT, which is another new app. And um, I received a birthday uh, card from my son last week. And it, it was a whole big poem and it was completely composed on chat GPT. Ooh, and then yeah, I proceeded yeah. to put it on my phone. I haven't used it yet, but it was quite an experience getting this elaborate poem that apparently he it had been composed in about 30 seconds by a few items he put in the in the chat GPT. I don't want to go too far up the ranch because we have some good question about using Wi-Fi, but does it, when Roy says chat GPT AI, does, do you know what she's talking about? You can be on, yeah. If right. you don't, who doesn't yeah, know it? I, but I thought a lot of artists are suing for copyright infringement with that AI app. I'm sure they are. I'm oh, sure there's a it, it's fun. scary. It's scary yeah, what it can I, do. I would, Let's yeah, show I would, an example. A lot of artists are now, you know, because they're being through AI, their work is being um, compromised on, yeah. So who and knows? Let's let's show you what it looks like. If since it's interesting, who who knows when we say ChatGPT AI what that is? It's artificial a, intelligence. So let's so Lynn's yeah. ever seen it. So let's take a look. Let me open this and uh, and go show you an example of what it is. So this is the web page. It's experimental. It's not really part of your experience yet, but it's coming. But how's you? Here's how you would write a poem. So in, in, with your pen on the bottom, you would, in real life, you'd write, Dear Royce, roses are red, violets are blue. The world is so lovely because of you. But let's say so we want it more personal, and I'm going to go write a poem. To Miss Moore, one of our room heroes, for a beautiful... 4th of July. She's in Nebraska and likes pizza and fast cars. So let's see what ChatGPT writes. To Miss Moore on this glorious day where the stars and stripes dance and sway in Nebraska's land where dreams take flight. I pen this poem bathed in freedom's light. Oh, Miss Moore, let's celebrate a 4th of July that is truly great, where pizza's scent fills summer air and fast cars speed without care. On to the variance. It goes pretty long here. At the end, may this day be filled with joy and cheer as we celebrate with those we hold dear. Happy 4th of July, Miss Moore, in Nebraska's embrace forevermore. Well, thank you, Elijah. Excellent. Uh, I want to move on to something important. Who's going away? Uh, sometime this summer. Who's, who's heading, who's, who's heading, getting out of here? This one came from Lynn Flygar, and I, it's a great question. So when you travel, who's ever gone to the, your La Quinta Inn and connected your phone or your laptop or your iPad to the hotel Wi-Fi? Mm -hmm. right? It's a yeah. normal thing to yeah. do, right? Yeah. Or yeah. even locally, Starbucks, the library, um, so many places like that. So that would be considered a public Wi-Fi. 
right? Now, if you go to hotels, I was in Vegas not too long ago, and you had the free Wi-Fi, which was pretty robust. It would solve problems, but you could buy the private Wi-Fi for $9.99 or $10.99 a day, or maybe $20.99 a day, which means it's like having your own Wi-Fi in the room with its own IP address, all its own numbers, as opposed to sharing it with that section of the, of the building, of the floor. Now, you don't always need to use that. And it's very helpful. Like if you go even with somebody's house in the Hollywood Hills or somewhere and the, you can't get your calls and you need to check in on the kids, uh, you would connect to the Wi-Fi in the home on your telephone. So there's a lot of reasons you would want to connect that Wi-Fi. So now if you're on a public Wi-Fi, remember that keyword public. You don't want to go on your phone at that point and check your bank balance where you'd be perfectly safe to do that at home on your Wi-Fi, on your computer, on your laptop. You wouldn't want to do anything like you wouldn't want to sign into your Amazon account and put your passwords. What you do want to do is send texts, send emails, open up your web browser on your phone, look for things, use apps that you know are convenient if you're connected to the Wi-Fi, but try to save that important information that's transmitted um, such as the, the utilities, LAWP, Laser's retirement, medical, so on and so forth, to home use on your own Wi-Fi. The airport, sometimes you have to download an app for airplanes. I get the Wi-Fi on the airplanes. Speaking of airplanes, who travels? Who buys airplane tickets or hotels online? Who's an online person? So let's go. Let's have some fun. Oh, I do. Let me show you something that I found that worked really well for me. So if you're in Google, I'm always showing off about Google, but if you're in your Google page and we go to the grid with all your Google apps, there's one that's been, they sort of popped in there called Google Travel. Then I could search for a destination. Um, let's say, I'm gonna go to Las Vegas because it seems like people are having so much fun there. <laughs> and uh, exactly, the pictures. Um, so I can then go look, of course, and find anything I want to do and it'll aggregate flights all in one place um hotels so you can even make it more you know you can be more specific and write Lake Como Italy let's go let's really go there and it'll aggregate hotels in Lake Como, which I've never been, but it looks like an amazing place, right? Um, and it's Google Travel. And then these, if you were to look at these flights, they are, you know, mixed. They're coming from different airplanes. Does anybody have any favorites they use for travel? I used to be a Priceline fan. Well, I don't recommend Expedia anymore because my you trip... Expedia. My trip in February, I went through a lot with Expedia, not knowing that they had changed where they didn't take cash money anymore. You had to have a charge card. No, there's always something. Yeah, that's true. I, I, I didn't know they had made that change or anything. And it was getting my brother uh, a ticket and for him. But uh, I don't recommend them. I've spoke with their reps and whatever, trying to straighten out everything. And it just They're didn't impossible. work for me. No, I think the one thing you accept when you use airlines, and, and I got stuck recently, is that using the app. That's the fastest way, you know, to get to get a hold of people. What did you say? It, using the app or texting oh. on your phone, right? Yeah. The phone calls yeah. are just too much. I've uh, got... I've had good luck with booking.com for hotels. Yeah, booking.com. Yeah, the, the thing I like yeah, about for, Google, for hotels. Yeah. The thing I liked about Google is it it looks at all those sites. It'll go to like booking.com, yeah. price. Right. Good. And so yeah. And, and good like, to know. But, sometimes I find like cheap flights and like last minute cheap express flights.com and I'm afraid to put the credit card in there. You know, like I've just really, you know, these sites. Uh, we have a question from Royce. Oh, um, oh! I was going to say, I, I said I'd had good luck with booking.com. One of the problems of booking like flights through, through one of the third party sites is that if there's a change, then you, and there's problems with it. If you haven't booked it directly through the airline, it can be a problem. It's always easier 
if you're dealing directly with Delta, that's for sure. Yeah, I pay mean, for with that. the air, pay for that. Yeah, yeah, for the airlines, I for hotels, it seems to be fine. But for airlines, if you, you know, because so much can go wrong, and then you can't get a, a you know, if you haven't bought your flight through them, it's, it's problematic. Yeah, I've got a question in here. And it's a good one. Um, but yeah, use them. I like to save money. So I definitely use them. Rhonda has a question. Oh, yeah. Uh, I In line with what she was just saying, uh, a couple of weeks ago, I had went to Atlanta and um, I noticed all the restaurants out there, no one took cash. You had to use your credit card for everything. Yeah, so mm -hmm. a lot of places are not taking cash anymore. I went in the airport was... I think JFK, and we were stuck. I went to the food area, you know, like the, the Hudson News one, you know, just with the expensive chips and things. You walk in, before you walk in, you swipe your credit card over a turnstile. You go in, you get your bag, you load up whatever you want, and you just walk out. You get a little text, and it says, you just bought $47 worth of chicken salad sandwich and, a, and some Doritos, you know. Um, <laughs> and it shows right up there, you know, and it's, there's no, it's just no human there. <laughs> A human there. I know it's sort of amazing. I had the thirty-seven dollar. Well, I think it was two years ago. The country of Sweden went totally cashless, mm -hmm. and now if tourists go to Sweden, they will um, they will allow a little bit of cash from tourists, but the citizens themselves are all cashless. Mm -hmm. I know one place in Omaha. Uh, don't take uh, cash and have an ATM machine right inside of that restaurant. I remember those. So there's a quick question I want to answer. Um, how do you how do you remove Wi-Fi, Darla? Darla depends if you're using an Android phone or an iPhone. But it, and, uh, we can go into it more later. But if you're using an iPhone. You're going to go into the iPhone settings, into the Wi-Fi section, and it might be under advanced or saved. And Android, you'll click the little gear and you'll do the same. You'll go into connections and then Wi-Fi um, and find those settings. And those are good to learn. You know, those are good to learn for the individual phones. So we've got some chat GPT down. And yeah, the, it's really the, using public Wi-Fi is just common sense. Uh, let's talk about another another issue on your phone. So you're out there shooting pictures and phones fill up with memory. There's a difference, by the way, between the memory on the phone and the memory in the cloud. Does anybody get that when I say that, what that difference is? Memory on the phone and memory on the cloud. So you're out there shooting pictures, you know, of every event going on. And I hope you, I certainly hope you are. And I hope you're doing that for your whole retirement. Um, and you're, get a notice say cloud is full or phone is storage is full. So your phone has a certain amount of storage that it comes with, just like your computer. Usually it's 125 megabytes, gigabytes, 256. And that's the physical amount of storage for all those pictures and videos and texts that live on your phone. That means if you have no Wi-Fi, those things are still on your phone. The next step, if you're in Apple world, it's called the iCloud. If you're in Google world, you have the Google storage drive, you can save things in the cloud, which means you now have more items that you've taken saved in your cloud, which is connected to your phone by your password and your, and your login information. And the reason it's usable is that it moves so fast now, you know, to not have that physical media, you know, living inside of your phone, it goes so fast to the antenna, to the cloud, that you don't even notice that it's not living on your phone. Um, so you can build up storage either way. One thing you can do, and it's sort of fun in your iCloud, pardon me, in your iPhone, you can go to photos. It's the photos app. Look for an album called videos and look through those videos here at the shop. We save lots of lives by going through the videos and finding 15 that are just were of the ground, you know, the bottom of the car or just that you played for three seconds and it was a, a bad video. A video was like 200, 300, 400, 500 um, pictures. So it's a quick place for you to go to safely on your phone, find the videos in your gallery, 
or your phone and see if what you can remove. You might have pictures you've also taken, you know, screenshots, just little one shots. All right, Charlene, you take care if you're not gone already. We will be back here in August. Um, yes, on an Android, you'll go to connections. Wanda, Wanda Collins has a question. That was my question, was how you do it on the Android phone. Yeah, you go to the settings and then connections. Elijah, does the cell phone, you know, get rid of stuff after a certain period of time? Some things it does and some things it doesn't. Mm -hmm. um, and the, the idea is to sell storage. But here's a cleanup, a natural cleanup. And this is always the first thing. It's the hardest bill to charge because you go and somebody calls you and they've been in, the, in a, a drama with the computer for three days. They're in that nether world, that twilight zone world, you know, coffee, cigarettes, and computers, you know, like a cloud of tech. We've all gone down the rabbit hole. By the way, yeah. if you get a scam email like Ms. O'Connor or anything, you know, that goes wrong with the computer, the best thing you can do is step away from it and regain some real life perspective on what you're looking at, what you're dealing with, what the odds are. Go back to yourself. This machine works like an episode of I Love Lucy and you're glued to it till its culmination. There's three acts and you want to watch them all. I don't know what it does. It really works well. And it works well in our generation. to sort of attentive to the screen. So slow down. But here's the magic cleanup machine. Often on your phone, you'll be using an app. Peter F. will be going to his text app and then his ESPN app and then his stocks app and then that app. But... He forgets that he's leaving them open in the background. They're not, you know, using them, but they're still running in the background. So you have four or five apps open. You can simply restart your phone. And it's recommended to do that once a day, three times a week. And you hold a couple of buttons on the iPhone, do the same thing on the Android and shut down and then turn it back on. When that shuts down, it shuts down all those apps and processes that are working in the background, anything buggy. And when it returns back on, it goes through another organizational process. Restarting your devices. Some people are afraid. They're like, I haven't restarted in 12 and a half years. It was 1987 since the last time I restarted my computer. And I don't know what's going to happen. And uh, But if you're not in the 1987 computer world, um, then restart your device. It, it's built in. There's something in there. It's, it's meant to do that. Who's, what's, oh, by the way, let's talk about responsible retirees. First of all, we are at 253. Let's take a little stretch. We are still waiting for a new person. I got my pizza. I don't know if anybody else got there. <laughs> sitting there in the fridge. I got there. They sent me a cold beer with it for after work. And uh, very good. When was the last time? So you're all responsible. Uh, throw out some departments who you worked in with the city. Joyce's iPad. Where did you work? What was your department? Oh. I worked for the fire department. There you go. Let's talk about Rachel Griffin. Where did you work? Convention Center. And you did your job every day for years and diligently and paid close attention. Now here, what about your private lives? When was the last time you looked at your phone bill from Verizon or Frontier <laughs> or T-Mobile? And, and then every day you went into work and you made sure those protocols were met. That was your job. And I know you did it right. And uh, but you got a phone bill. When was the last time you looked at your cable bill closely? Then, and they printed it out or opened up that envelope that you get also because it pays automatically on the credit card. Just not looking at the credit card to see if there's some weird bump. I pay 129 to Charter or Frontier. Why is it 189? In lieu of that, what if there's $7 on there? Or better yet, what if you get that bill in front of you and call them and say, listen, this is my plan. What are the deals? What are the savings? I'm a senior. I live here, I live there, all these plans, and, and manage that. You could do yourself very well by approaching those kind of boring bills, you know, um, especially your phone and your cable. Those are always big ones for me. I really, I really cut the cord. Okay, yes, Royce. I just did that today with my LA Times bill. I, I got a notice that it was going up, so I looked at my past bills. It's like doubled in the last two years. I called them up and I got a, a, a little bit of a break That's on awesome. a promotion today. That's awesome. That's, yeah. you know, I was late on my AAA card, which is a big no-no here in Southern California. 
You don't remember that anymore, Miss Moore or Carmen. Oh, Carmen's here. You have to have your AAA card. That's, you do not want to be on the 101 in August without that AAA card. Um, but anyway, for some reason, I spaced, and it, it, the card was frauded before that. I had a big fraud on my credit card. I'll tell you about that in a moment. And um, so I, I got a like, personal call, you know, from LaShonda, like at their office in Irvine, and offered me a special deal. Like, like you can have the executive. That means three pullovers or something. So I was amazed. It was, it was excellent. It was worth, I mean, I should have missed your bills, my bills. But in that case, they, they really had something to offer. So those are good projects. And the big ones. And even your LADWP or SoCal Gas, if you're covering those bills, um, you know, any of those things, you're certainly a cable bill uh, and the Wi-Fi. And, watch, and, and see what you're getting for the Wi-Fi. Be a little more advanced. Be a little more analytical. So when you went to the convention center, you just didn't walk past it. You had to like say why that happened. So say, so I am paying $89 a month. What's my Wi-Fi speed? What do I get for that? And see, and see that you make sure you're getting, there are ways they can test. Sometimes you might need a new modem. Um, so there's a lot to discover just by looking at those boring little utilities, certainly your Wi-Fi and your telephone bill, the cell phone bill, certainly. Well, one in thing, Vegas, Cox has a monopoly on internet, and so their prices are where totally in Vegas, Carmen. Yes, yes, yes. 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 Oh, yes. They have your only other choice is Sucky Century, and they're worse than Cox, and and Cox has it so that if you don't bundle something useless like a house phone that has no service, they want to charge. You know, they still continue to charge you an arm and a leg. So. You know, as you might remember, Carmen, the coin of the realm in the neighborhoods that you find yourself, Southern California, don't care if you're San Diego, up north, Vegas, Nebraska, is which company has the fiber optic cable that runs through your house? Now, back in the early days, who remembers very early cable vision in Los Angeles, the box on your TV that had four channels? I uh, do. The, the slot I machine. Do. Remember the slots? You know, the slot yes. machine? Yes. Um, so that originally was who has a ca.roadrunner.com. Remember Roadrunner? Uh-huh. They Time Warner was the company and they had the rights and they dropped that first cable in 1969, 71. Whether you're in the Valley, the San Gabriel Valley, the Hollywood Hills, they're the ones that have that cable and they've been able to use that cable forever and, and use it for fiber optic. When you had another one like AT&T, the, the Bells before they were split up, we all remember the when they owned everything, Pacific Bell, you even had to buy your phone from them, you know, like the handset, you'd have to go and you had to return it. Um, they were working on that smaller jack, which is a phone line. So the coaxial cable, that white unruly cable that entered your life somewhere in the early 80s with the little pin sticking out of the end of it, if anybody can envision that, like coming out of the wall at this point with 100 wow. layers of paint. Um, that is a bigger cable that's still very powerful. So they can send Wi-Fi over that. You'll see that cable go into the box in back of a modem up and screwed in and then it converts to your wi-fi signal so like here in los angeles the one that has most of that is spectrum which was time warner which was ca.roadrunner uh cox has probably been in vegas a long time carmen i know frontier is often in the inland empire san diego irvine the charter as well but they are monopolies they are they 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 are and they're unregulated so uh aren't, and boy aren't we dependent on them um, yeah, but check that bill. And certainly if you're over 55, there could be some benefits on that. Wi-Fi is like buying a used car in 1990. You know what I mean? Like, remember, okay, go sit with, I gotta go talk to the boss, let's go around. Do you want the clear coat? Let me check. Like, you know, it's it's so canoodle, you know, there's so many tabs in there, but we're dependent on it. Um, and it's invisible, like it's, you can't really touch it. You can, and it's it's sort of like, if you're you have Wi-Fi in your house and then it's on, you go out, you're out for all day, or you spend a couple of days away, and the Wi-Fi is still running in your house. It's like leaving the water on, or because you're like, you know, it's like turning the spigot on, the Wi-Fi is still running. It's just sort of a weird kind of thing we do it, you know, uh, with that Wi-Fi. And uh, nevertheless, we'll be here to learn more about it as it moves forward. And it will. I mean, I hope. Should we shut it off? Should we shut off the Wi-Fi? Yeah, but there's no reason to. That just sort of disrupts it. It can't update itself. It's safer when it's on. You know, because it's on Wi-Fi and the machine is on. Uh, and it doesn't do anything that has little machines burn a little bit of energy. Um, by the way, here's a little note. 
if your Wi-Fi and modem, that stuff is covered by 12 pa papers and some Christmas wrapping from last year, it's dusty, clear that out. Nothing needs to breathe. Find that spot where it sits. If you have it in a closet and you close it, you know, try to let that get some air. It, it needs to be, that, that's the secret to all devices. Don't let them get too hot. Elijah, I have a question for Please. you. Um, they have these little gadgets in that that you can buy and plug in that's supposed to take uh, your Wi-Fi and expand it through a, your house on um, different areas. Uh, how uh, efficient are those things? It's a great, we installed a lot of them. In the old days, you'd have to run wires, ethernet cables to every room. Right. And now they sell things called Wi-Fi extenders. There's a, two kinds. The ones that the one that's really changed the world. So, for example, think of a Hancock Park kind of house here in Los Angeles, craftsman style, a lot of wood, like that, that kind of plaster you can't put a nail in. You know, like it just keeps crumbling around you. That classic, those classic South LA has them, craftsman homes. They're thick, so no signal gets through the walls. You know, if you get that one Wi-Fi signal and it's working okay in the room, it comes in, it stops at the kitchen wall or the living room wall, or it doesn't make it up the stairs. You can get a Wi-Fi extender, which borrows some of that Wi-Fi and creates another network. However, let me share the screen. This changed everything, and there's nary a problem. All right, so let's find the nice page. Can you see my window? Oh, yeah. Okay, so yes, that's what it looks like. There's a couple of them, pretty simple. And how it works is you plug one of these into your modem in your house. There's a modem and right, and you plug it in there and power it on. And then you get an app on your phone called Google Home. And it can guide you to the setup. And you'll put one of these in different rooms around the house. I want to show you. So you can spread it around. Um, it, sound, it might sound a little complex right now because it is a little a little bit to learn. And it's expensive, $199. It's not cheap, but it works so good. Well, I bought a, a small one and that you plug in in another room. Um, it was like $40 or something like that this from one. Amazon. Here it is. And it seemed to help a little bit, and I didn't wasn't sure. This one, who just said that? Who just I did. About? Who's I? Because I can't Linda. see. Linda. Linda. Yeah. So those work, but this really works. Um, and so, for example, you place these little pucks in different rooms around the house, and they move the Wi-Fi evenly. Now, if you have, let's see how many square feet. Uh, this one would be, if you just get one, let's look at the specs, tech specs, just one of these, and they work, I can attest to it. It's a little in the weeds right now, but I wanna see. So that they cover. Up to 2,200 square feet. So that's a lot of coverage. Yeah. Um, but if you wanted to really make it more robust, obviously you get a, the two pack. Uh, and so one is a mesh system. The other one looks like this. It's just a more $40 one. And that could be a solution too. And they take a little bit of setup. It takes a thought. That would look more maybe like this. Is that 2,200 square feet for one floor or two floors? It, it's claiming the entire residence, all 2,200 square feet, that it'll be able to make it through walls. But people often do buy a second one. Sometimes they'll put it in the far living room or den so it'll work in the backyard, you know, um, and spread it around. And it's pretty fun to set up. It's pretty basic. It's a little more than a tech class here. But once you get it, you check it on your phone. One of the benefits is 
let's say you're running your house. Carmen is running around. She's running her place in Vegas while she's off in Lake Como that she just discovered on Google Travel App. Everything good comes from tech class. And um, so she's in there and she has two guests staying there for a week and a half. And she gives them, she provides Wi-Fi and the network is um, Las Vegas, Carmen's Las Vegas rental. The password is one, two, three, four. They leave. She opens up the Google Wi-Fi app and she says, rename the network. And it becomes Bill and Mary's wedding Wi-Fi rental. Here's the new passcode. And she emails Bill and Mary. So when they get there, they just plug in and look for that. You could also shut it off from far away. So it's pretty advanced. You know, it all, it moves, you know, like all that smart stuff. Who has a camera in their home? Who has a little webcam just there when they're gone, they can open up an app. Is that a big no? Those things are like $19.99. I don't know what you mean by this. Ooh, let me show you. It's <laughs> indispensable to me. Um, let's go here. Are you talking about like the ring cameras? Exactly, but even a less expensive one. Oh yeah, I have ring. Ring works. That's expensive. Yeah, there's yeah, I'm in the process of getting it done yeah. around my house. You can get them. Here's one. There's a couple from uh where's here we go. Let's go to Best Buy. I got mine for $19.99 and I'm gonna show it to you. So came like this in a two pack. Same thing. You would plug that in at $65 for two of them. Uh, you plug that in in different areas in your home. You download an application. And in that app, you then open it. So let me show you how good it is, actually. I have it. So here's one application I use. <clears throat> I'm not going to show up my mouse, but she's 89. She lives alone. She has people come in today. She's doing great. She's amazing. Um, but I have a little cam in the corner and my brothers and I can just check on her, make sure she's on the couch. We have one aimed between the hallway and the bedroom. So if there's ever slipping um, and you can talk and listen to it. So here's one, though, I have in another place. I want to show it to you. OK, I think you like this idea. And it's so inexpensive. Um, give me one second. And we, I used to have a cat, so I'd watch my cat from wherever I was. But just for home safety, to watch each other and to watch your place when you're traveling. All right, hold on, almost there. Now, I have cameras like in my windows that I could see what's going on. That's not better. I like also just having, you know, from a distance, I'll show you. Okay, I'm connecting now on the miracle of, of Zoom. Okay. So go. you went and just stuck that thing on your in yes, your mom's house I, I don't even yeah i didn't even stick it in. it sits on a counter um let me open my screen and i want to show it to you so here's the one that i used i got it on the shelf you know at, at best buy and the you know as, as you leave the impulse items and the app is called Do you have to pay a monthly fee for all of those things it's not that's the thing who just said that me belinda belinda great point no you do not that's the beauty of it it was a one-time cost for the camera. Now, oh, okay. the, they'll make money as Belinda. Let's say you want to have it recorded. I can watch okay. it live, you know, as it's happening. But if, let's say you want them to pay for the subscription, so it records every six hours and then saves, yes. that would that's when they would get you. Oh, that's what it is. So you don't that's have to get it if you don't, you don't have to. I don't get that. So here's an app called Casa. Now, I used to have an old cat. I was gone all day. I watched my cat. So now I'm opening the Casta app. I have one home on there. And there is, do you see me? No. So that's one of my, I have a couple of places, and that's one of the condos, and that's just a camera I have looking there. Where's right? the camera? Behind this. So imagine my face is looking this way. Oh. And it just sits on the shelf and just have a view of a room. That's the concept. The I don't other, see your cat. No, no, there's no more cat. My cat sadly went to the went to the uh, the Rainbow Bridge. Here's the <laughs> one I use. Um, this one is called this one is called Blink. There it is. You see, it's Blink, and, and 
I think this will not be a problem. I think mom always appreciates the business. So here I'm watching. Those are two views of my mom's place. It's my nephew, oh, my mom. Okay. And me. So then I can go here and that's going to be, uh, she's not there. She's not in the living room. And it also has volume. That's her living room where I can mostly find her. And now, does your mom like you spying on her? Yeah, she's no, she likes it. She likes okay. it. Okay. No, she does. And uh, because I mean, she feels vulnerable and she trusts us. And uh, so um, she does like it, you know. Um, and also, she has, I mean, housekeepers there. And so, you, not for nothing, you could check in, you know, make sure everything's going okay. Somebody's there with your precious elder. Uh, right. You know, it's uh, they're pretty inexpensive. I think that would be good too, Elijah, for people like live alone that's getting up in age. Oh well, yeah, especially if you give it to someone that you trust, right? That would be right. the, the best part. Right. I want to show something over here. Connections, and there's Wi-Fi. Now in my Wi-Fi, here's where I could delete some of the old saved networks. How do you delete those? Yeah. Well, I'm not going to do it right here on the, on the, uh, on here, but you would hold your finger on them and then you'd get that choice to delete. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. I also have one called Wi Fi calling on here, which is an Apple thing and an, I, and an uh, Android thing, which means your phone could use the Wi Fi in your home to make those phone calls instead of having to look for a signal out the window. Um, now, when I use Wi-Fi, it also shows who's on, you know, that's in the area or whatever. Yeah, well, it shows, for example, yes, this yeah. is creepy. This is creepy. These are people around me's Wi-Fi, other people. Sometimes people say terrible things on here, like, uh, I'm spying on you. Get out of my house. You stink. You go, the Dodgers are the worst. Like, you can change your password to anything. Um yeah, so that's the world of emails. Um, and then if you could see on the bottom, if I wanted to forget, you see the little garbage can that says forget? Yes. Mm -hmm. I click that and that would remove that. And it would be the same thing in an iPhone. Okay. Elijah, can I ask you a quick question? Please go right ahead. I'm where, right. where do you uh, install the Blink? The, so it's an app. To, to, connect, to connect that to your uh, Android phone. Is that Ellen? Yes. So Ellen, uh, are you an you're an Android? So an Android, yes. you go to the apps, the uh, pardon me, the Play Store, the Google Play Store. Yes. And, and you look for the Blink app. Oh, they have a Blink app in the Google Play Store. Okay. Yeah, now, yes, exactly. For, but if you bought these things on the box, you'd see go to the Play Store or the App Store in for 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 you Apple cultists. Um, Nobody got my joke there. Nobody, Sally, <laughs> yeah. Apple cultist. Um, but uh, if you go to the app store in the Apple world um, and look for that app connected, there's so many of them. Oh, so there's just, uh, once you click on it, it will automatically connect to yeah, that. Yeah, you'll, right. You'll type in maybe, you'll, exactly, you'll see some choices, Ellen, and then uh -huh. it'll say install. Oh, I see. And then it'll take you through, you know, it'll say, hold the, phone next to the new camera it's pretty smart it sets up pretty wisely oh okay so you'll walk me through what i should do in order to connect that uh, yeah feel free everybody has a ticket to call the shop to email us you know it's summertime so we're just sitting by the pool drinking mai tais and relaxing we have all the time in the world for our lasers family but really if i want to drill it into your heads it's amazing i'm looking at a number of 40 people in this class and nobody moves I'm just really thankful that you all continue to come to class. Now, next month, by the way, we have some trivia questions. And Rhonda, I see your question uh, is August. So we have a little thing to talk about now in August. Um, uh, and then comes the new year together. And there's nothing more than tech in the new year, uh, all the way to our Christmas party and our graduation ceremony in December. Um, so uh, as you're moving through this month, and if you're thinking of buying any new equipment or anything you need, could be just phone charger. That, that ugly cable that is just ratty and it's time to go replace, 
now is the time to go to Best Buy or Staples and replace those little things. Because as soon as you see that back to school sign hit, mm -hmm. everything goes, forget inflation. It's just going to be, you know, what people need it. And so everything will go up a little. So whether it's a new advance, a computer or a monitor, which is always another discussion, or just that little stuff, it's time to change around the house. You know what I need to change around the house? I need to change at the office. Let me show you. You know the handset telephone? Let me get this off. You know this one that sits in the mm -hmm. cradle? Mm -hmm. This is like 10 I years old. One. And the battery is no good in it anymore. And it's not worth changing, you know, the battery in the back. Uh, so this is something I should go to Best Buy, Amazon, uh, and buy a new one or a couple of new ones, you know, and because the there's a battery in there and it's just not worth then going online and trying to change that. Uh, th little things. That, like, and, and, what is that? What was that? Um, what did I just show? Yeah. That was a landline. Um, let me do that again. You know, a lot of people in their homes have an extra landline still lying around. Um, yeah, I, I, I have them at my house. Oh, yeah. I'm gonna do, hold on. I got to show you the other one that you can't update. Hold on. Here's my favorite one. This one never breaks. <laughs> Here's the volume control, by the way. You yes. see that? Oh, I remember wow. them. Yes. That's the wow. MT. Very good. Carmen, 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 we have to be important 15 minutes. Where are you? I was so, thinking about getting another one of those type phones. Yeah. I, don't know I plugged it in. Right. I plugged it in and it's it received big. calls, but it couldn't and send it out. But I'm talking about this one, you know, the little handset one that's probably been sitting yeah. on the corner for a lot of folks, yeah. I know myself included, for a long time. All that little bitty stuff, make your list, go get it now because it's just going to be more expensive. Um, well, it's cool. you, uh, you were talking about um, modems and that. How often do you think you need to replace a modem? Three, three to five years. Yeah, three to five years. And if you're renting your modem, and I see Jeanette and Ron, I'm going to get to your questions in a moment. So some people, you're maybe you might, if you haven't looked at your bill, you wouldn't know this, that some people own their modem and Wi-Fi. It means you bought it and you plugged it in, you set it up with your service provider, any of them, Cox, Charter, Spectrum, so on. And um, they gave you the equipment and you rent it from them. There's a 399 charge, equipment charge every month. Now, if that's the case, that's not a bad thing. That's a little insurance. This is where they can fix it. But you want to call them and say it's been seven years since that's been changed. It's time for a new modem. And they will gladly send one. They want you to use a better one. So three questions, summer-related tech, tech that happened in the past, something that we know about. What year did this famous summertime ad for Copper Tone come out? The little girl. Who remembers that girl? Especially if you were driving to Anaheim or Disneyland, I remember there was a billboard on the 91 freeway. And by the way, Jodie Foster was one of the models for that little girl. Who remembers the Copper Tone ad? And now put your answers in there. Going once, going twice, three out, bids are stopped. All right. Israel, take yes, sir. First. I'm going to lay out the answer now. Are we ready? In 1959, the first ad oh. of um, And she started with her daughter as a model. Six years later, she used Jodie Foster, the actress, as a model. So do we got any 59ers in here? Members swimming in the above ground swimming pool. Maybe the neighbor's kid's dad got one. The above ground swimming pool. Southern Californians. What year did this come out to the general public? where your neighbor could go to Kmart and put up a swimming pool, which was probably pretty disgusting after the first six hours. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and bidding is going once. There's a delay sometimes on our different computers as far as you getting the information when we type it in. Oh my God, do I fear a class action lawsuit coming from Jeanette? I don't know. Um, when did the above ground cool come out? And answer is going once going twice and closed bidding is closed mm -hmm. the american public it's a post-war thing and uh here we go in 1907 
the first above ground pool oh. opened up at the Philadelphia Racquet Club. But wow. in 1947, it became available to the general public. So if you had 1907 wow. or 47, you're a winner. Let's take a look.